Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Investors may often use acronyms to talk about a group of stocks. In fact, there's a popular acronym that actually has a double meaning, and that is MAGA. Now, most of you may know MAGA as Make America Great Again, which was the slogan for Donald Trump during his campaign. However, in the investing world, when someone talks about MAGA, they're talking about Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. These MAGA stocks are the top four stocks within the S&P 500 index fund. And as part of the S&P 500 index fund, MAGA represents 17% of the overall S&P 500 index. That means with just four stocks in the over 500 companies that are included in the S&P 500, they represent one fifth of the entire index. So if you're looking to invest into individual stocks instead of only investing in index funds, this may be a group of stocks that you may want to look into. And while I don't necessarily recommend purchasing individual stocks, especially with people that are new to investing, when there are four companies that are leading the charge of all companies within the S&P 500 index, or rather all stocks within the public investing world in general, then these are companies that you may wanna think about if you do wanna invest in individual stocks. So let's start off with the M in MAGA, and that is Microsoft. Microsoft is a company that was created by Bill Gates back in the early 1970s. And in 1986, he took the company public so that you can actually buy stock in Microsoft, the company. Now, Microsoft is most well known for their Windows operating system, which comes on the majority of any desktop or laptop computers that you may purchase. And also their Office products, which include Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint, are products that we use pretty much in our everyday lives, whether you're a student or whether you're working at a job that requires you to make documents or make calculations on an Excel sheet, or perhaps give a presentation using the PowerPoint platform. And they're probably more a part of your everyday life than you probably even think about on a regular basis. And so for example, with the Windows operating system owned by Microsoft, Windows represents 80% of the desktop and laptop market. And so if you have a computer, more than likely you're using a Windows computer. So they're the number one desktop and laptop operating system. And then once you consider combined usage of mobile and desktop operating systems, they're second overall in the world. And so with billions of people using desktops, laptops, and mobile devices all around the world, this is definitely something that billions of people are using across the globe. And when you think about it, most people will have more than one device. They may have a desktop, they may also have a laptop, and they may also have a mobile device. Device, whether it's a phone or a tablet. And with Microsoft Surface tablets, which are kind of a mix between laptops and tablets, and some people actually call them laplets, they're moving even more into the mobile space because of their Surface laptops. And the Microsoft Office products may actually be even more popular than their operating system. Because with their Microsoft Office products, anyone that has access to the internet actually has access and the ability to use Microsoft products. So with Office 365, now known as Microsoft 365, you can access Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint directly from your internet browser or as an app on Android devices as well as iOS devices. And so you don't even have to own a device that runs the Microsoft operating system and you can still use Microsoft products as long as you have access to the internet. And so from an early age as a student, many students are already using Microsoft products in school. If you're writing an essay, you're probably using Microsoft Word. If you have to create a presentation, you're probably gonna use PowerPoint. And those are more than likely gonna be the first applications that you use for those purposes when you're in school. And once you move into the workforce and you move into a position where you may have to do presentations or you may have to write papers or do research or anything of that nature, you're gonna use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint. And that's not even mentioning any of the other Microsoft products. They also have a cloud platform that many businesses are using, especially in this time with the coronavirus going on and people aren't meeting in person. You may need to move certain processes to the cloud that normally you would do on premise. Microsoft Teams is being used more to actually have meetings away from the office. And if you're at home and you're not working, you may actually be using Xbox, which is also owned by Microsoft, to play games and meet up with your friends online. 
That way you can stay in touch and still stay connected with people. And that includes Skype as well that you can use to call your friends and family and have video phone calls instead of actually meeting people in person. And so whether you're using a Microsoft Windows operating system, using Android device, or using an iOS device, you are probably using a Microsoft product in your everyday life. And so speaking of Apple, Apple being the first A in the MAGA acronym, Apple is also very entwined in your everyday life. The second most used operating system for desktops and laptops is the Mac OS. And although they only hold 18% market share in the desktop and laptop operating system market, they are actually number two and there's no one close to them. Other operating systems are less than 2% market share, which includes Linux and Chrome OS operating systems for desktops and laptops. However, Apple is the leader once you move to tablets. The iPad is the leading device when you talk about tablets. In fact, iPad represents 59% of tablet market share. And then once you move into smartphones, Apple is also the second most used smartphone operating system in the world. And although they're only number two as far as smartphone operating systems, they're number one in the hearts of many people. Apple products are probably one of the most loved. In fact, many people call Apple users Apple zombies because no matter what Apple puts out, if you've been an Apple user for a long time, you're gonna buy their product no matter what the price is. So there's no one that I can think of that are more diehard fans than fans of Apple products. Their products are easy to use and they're also aesthetically pleasing. And more recently, Apple has tried to become the leader as far as thinking about users' privacy. And so that's one thing that they've been doing a lot more lately. And some people think that's gonna be a good proposition as far as distinguishing themselves versus Android devices. And so Apple is definitely leading as far as companies that have an emotional bond with their users. And Apple products are not cheap. In fact, before today, because the Apple iPhone SE2 is actually releasing today, Apple has never had an iPhone that has cost less than $600 dollars and they have never been brand new iPhones. If you look at current brand new iPhones, they're usually in the $800 or $1,000 range and can go as high as $1,400 for a brand new iPhone if you get the top of the line version. But now they have the iPhone SE2, which is now only $400, brand new if you buy it directly from Apple. Now you may be able to actually get it for less. I know Walmart was actually doing a deal where you could get the iPhone for $200 if you upgrade with either AT&T or Verizon. But even at $400, they're really trying to take some of the market share that Android has on the mobile operating system and the mobile devices that are being sold across the globe. Because typically, if you were buying a $600 iPhone, that was usually a two or three year old device, even brand new that you're buying from Apple in order to get it for that price. And now once we actually talk about services that Apple provides, once you go into Apple Music and Apple TV and the iTunes App Store, Apple is really moving into becoming more of a services company. So they make a lot of money from services. Much more of their revenue comes from services than it has in the past. Although the iPhone is still the leading driver of revenue of Apple. But despite that, once you compare iOS services to the Android services of the Play Store, Apple makes way more money than Google does as far as their App Store. So due to the high cost of their products, the love that the Apple users have for their products and services, this allows Apple to make loads of money and they will probably continue to grow and continue to be a trillion dollar company like they are at the moment. Despite the lower market share, they can still compete with Microsoft and Google as far as being a very valuable company. Speaking of Google, Google represents the G within the MAGA acronym for these stocks. And Google is actually the number one mobile operating system in the world. Google owns Android and Android represents 72% of the smartphone market share. And that's even without Google Pixel devices not being the most popular Android devices. Samsung phones are actually more popular than Google's actual own hardware. But there are so many companies that actually make the hardware for Android devices while Google still owns the actual Android software as it's an actual open source software that any company can use. So examples of companies that use Android software on their phones are Samsung, HTC, Motorola, and there are many others as well, but those are the top companies that use Android software for their smartphone devices. And unlike Apple devices with the iOS operating system, with Android there's a wide selection as far as the price that you have to pay for a brand new smartphone. And you can actually get a brand new Android device for as low as sometimes $50 if you purchase it from a particular cell phone provider. But their devices can also go as high as $1,400 just like Apple devices. And 
And this is one of the main reasons that Android devices have the largest market share because they can serve a larger segment of the globe with their devices because they can sell lower cost devices to many more people. But Apple is definitely doing their best to try to dip into that market share with their lower priced iPhone SE at $400. But Android devices and Android software actually aren't the number one source of revenue for Google. The number one source of revenue comes from Google search and YouTube. Did you know that google.com is the number one search engine in the world? And guess what the number two search engine is? YouTube. I know many people may not think of YouTube as a search engine, but think about all of the things that you search for whenever you go on youtube.com or of all of the search results that come up on Google's website where you actually see a video come up as one of the search results and that leads you to YouTube. And so people go to YouTube before they go to bing.com or before they use a privacy oriented search engine like DuckDuckGo. YouTube is the number two place to go. And so once you combine them with Google, they actually own a 92% market share in the search engine market. And with 92% of the search engine market, that's what they use to actually serve ads, which is the majority of the revenue that Google earns. And while this doesn't include many of the other businesses that are owned by Google's parent company, which is called Alphabet, Google is still the number one driver of revenue for Alphabet as a company. But in their other areas under Alphabet, which they include in their other bets, there are companies like the Google Cloud Services, Waymo, which is a self-driving car service that doesn't even have widespread usage as of yet, Google Fiber, which is providing internet services for not even a large segment of the US, and they're also moving into healthcare. So Google has a lot of smaller companies that are very diverse. But when you think about Google, the first thing you think about is their search engine as well as YouTube because they are the main drivers of their business. And now last but not least, the second A in the MAGA acronym for investing is Amazon. Amazon is the number one place to shop online. If you wanna order something and you wanna get it fast, Amazon, especially if you're an Amazon Prime user, you can get just about anything delivered to you within two business days. And in certain areas, you can get it within hours or just one business day if you're in a larger market. And so while Amazon started off just selling books online, you can literally buy just about anything on Amazon. You can actually buy a tiny house from Amazon. Definitely check it out. Just go on Amazon and search. You can buy a home on Amazon. And similar to Microsoft and Google, they also have a cloud business that is growing very rapidly. In fact, Amazon's cloud business is the number one cloud business over Microsoft and over Google. But despite this, it's actually not a major part of their business, even considering they're the number one cloud business. Shopping online is still their number one service and the number one thing that people think about when they think about Amazon. At one point, Amazon even tried to step into the smartphone market. And of course, I'm thinking that it was more about the search and getting ad revenue versus actually trying to make their own operating system because they use the Android operating system for their devices. But many of you probably didn't even know that they ever had a smartphone and that's because it didn't really do very well. They weren't really able to penetrate the smartphone market even with using the Android operating system and that being the majority of the market share in the smartphone market. It just didn't really pan out for them and so you're not going to see a $1,400 Amazon device coming anytime soon or maybe you will. But it seems like every month or every couple of months you hear about some area that Amazon is moving into or that Jeff Bezos is deciding to take Amazon into. Like they purchase Whole Foods. Jeff Bezos also owns a rocket company. There are so many different things that Amazon does that it's almost not even a surprise when you hear about Amazon moving into another space, including healthcare, because they actually have a company that they're working with Berkshire Hathaway and JP Morgan to provide healthcare services. And so at any point, Jeff Bezos could decide that Amazon's gonna buy some other billion dollar business. And when you compare that to their trillion dollar market cap, a few billion dollars is really nothing for Amazon to drop to purchase another business or to move into another segment that they're already not within at the moment. So when looking at individual stocks, you really wanna look into what these companies are doing, how intertwined they are with your everyday life, and what products and services you can't live without. 
And these four companies show up in so many different areas of your lives that you probably didn't even think about unless you actually sat down and looked at all of the things that you spend money on or all of the products and services that you use between your home life and your work life. And this is one of the main reasons these are the four most valuable companies in the S&P 500 as well as in the world. And so if you were to go outside of investing in the total stock market index fund or an S&P 500 index fund, one way to determine what individual stocks you may want to look into is to look into the top stocks that are within those index funds. And those top stocks are the mega stocks, Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon, at least for the S&P 500. And so if you wanna get a chance of actually getting free stock in any of these companies, there are a couple of investing apps that actually allow you the opportunity to earn free stock in some of these businesses. So there's Robinhood that gives you one free stock whenever you sign up for their platform using referral link. And you don't actually need to make a deposit in order to get that free stock. And you also have Webull, which gives you the opportunity to actually get two free stocks when you sign up using a referral link, as long as you deposit at least $100 when you initially sign up for the platform. And so I'll have referral links for those platforms in the description below. And I also have referral links to one of my favorite platforms, which is M1 Finance, which allows you to buy fractional shares into big companies like Amazon and Google, whose stocks actually cost more than $1,000 per share. But you can get into those stocks with as little as $10, you can buy a piece of any of these MACA stocks. And I have reviews of these platforms so you can see which one works best for you. And so make sure you check out those videos as well. All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not already a member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button now below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.